you know the games. You know the platform. The company that gave us Half-Life Portal and the entire platform you buy your games on, Steam, has built its entire success on one consistent strategy, using the next major technological leap for a massive competitive advantage. For decades, this strategy allowed them to quietly build some of the most advanced systems in gaming, from enemy behavior in the late 90s to the marketplace of Steam today. But now, Valve's co-founder, Gabe Newell, believes the next great advantage is here, putting it on the level of the personal computer or the birth of the internet, calling artificial intelligence game-changing. He said, So, essentially, AI is going to be a cheat code for, for people who, who want to take advantage of it. Um, so build something, whether it's a game or a website or a piece of software or some service. If you could do that while capitalizing on the, the new capabilities that AI gives you, then, I'm, then I think you're off to the races and you're very, very well situated. There's going to be a gigantic shortage of people across all industries who can understand um, how, to, how, to, how to take advantage of it. And I'm, I'm serious, like everything is going to be impacted. Valve has been testing these waters for years, working right alongside the biggest names in tech. Valve actually partnered with OpenAI when its co-founder Elon Musk was still highly active in the organization, years before ChatGPT was even a thing, to create a bot for Dota 2. This partnership resulted in OpenAI's 5 bot, which in 2019 completely dominated the reigning world champions, Team OG in a best of 3 series, and many other top Dota pros at the time. It proved that an AI could master one of the world's most complex real-time strategy games. And this brings us to the biggest challenge. How do you allow for a big tech shift on one of the world's largest gaming platforms while keeping things running smoothly? Steam, which gets 1 trillion daily impressions, has gone from outright banning AI-generated games due to copyright fears in 2023 to fully embracing them one year later in new rules. This strategy shows Valve positioning themselves as pioneers in the AI future of gaming, and the hardware is following too. Just earlier this year, we saw in new code that Valve was starting to use H200 chips, which are high-end data center AI processors. Processors. Long before modern AI tools became popular, Valve was already adding machine learning into the core of its games. Uh, now, I might during the talk accidentally say machine learning because we actually do a fair amount of uh, machine learning at Valve as well. The simplest way to talk about this, for the purposes of my talk, if I use machine learning, you should just assume I mean deep learning. But if, if this sort of red circle represents deep learning, then this orange circle represents machine learning. Just go back to the first time you ran into a head crab in Half-Life. The way they leap at you with surprising precision. That's simple AI in action. It uses something called a finite state machine. A simple set of rules. If you see the player, attack. If you don't, patrol. Back in 1998, Half-Life's AI was pretty groundbreaking and became highly influential in subsequent years. Valve then completely upped the ante with Left 4 Dead. Instead of just enemies, they created the director. Valve game designer Mike Booth once explained the problem they were trying to solve. We also have some unique experience with online multiplayer AI technology with what we did with uh, Counter-Strike and the Counter-Strike bot for Condition Zero and for Counter-Strike Source. So the idea was to combine these, these things together and create some sort of fusion of multiplayer, single-player narrative sort of game and see what we can come up with in the co-op space and explore it. What, what I've seen a lot is, is especially in, in a single-player um, sort of, of game design, designers want, to, want the player to experience every single bit of coolness that they have created every time they play. With what we do with Left 4 Dead, we try to actively avoid that. We try to set up a whole bunch of interesting things that can happen, but any given run, they probably won't. But what's especially cool about that is they can juxtapose, they can shuffle around, they may even stack on top of each other. And when those things do, especially if they're low probability things, that's where you get the crazy stories. So in Left 4 Dead, the AI director algorithmically drives the overall pacing. It creates peaks and valleys of, intent, of intensity similar to what we see with Counter-Strike.
The other place Valve has been using AI is in the Steam store itself. Steam's recommendation engine is the silent powerhouse that has quietly generated billions in revenue. It's the engine that says, if you like this simulation game, you might like this one. This system goes far beyond just looking at the genre though. Since 2019, it has used collaborative filtering and other techniques to predict your taste based on your playtime and the playtime of millions of other users. In a 2020 Steamworks presentation, a Valve employee said, This was an experiment we started in the Steam Labs last year, um, which was called the Interactive Recommender. And this is used as a machine learning algorithm that analyzes the playtimes of everyone on Steam and then compares that to your playtime, what games you played on Steam and how long you played them, uh, and uses all that to generate a list of recommendations that are personalized for you. So it's a very powerful uh, recommendation algorithm. And the games tend to be uh, often are kind of deeper cuts than and, and not what you would see uh, elsewhere on the store. It's more of a, a across your entire play history. So it can be like a if you've played a lot of different kinds of games, you've, you'll probably see a lot of different kinds of games in this section. It's by looking at those player profiles, looking at people who played this game, what else did they play, what have you played, how, and how much those things line up. As we also mentioned earlier, OpenAI's 5 bot was being trained on Dota 2 back in the late 2010s playing the equivalent of 180 years of games against itself every single day to get better. An OpenAI employee said that Dota is a great test bed for artificial intelligence. It's a very complicated game with a large competitive scene. And what this means is that you have to develop new techniques. You have to push forward the boundary of what's possible in order to get anywhere. The rules of Dota are so complicated that if you just think really hard about how the game works and try to write those rules down, you're not even going to be able to reach the performance of a reasonable player. So our bot is trained entirely through self-play. It starts out completely random with no knowledge of the world and simply plays against a copy of itself, which means it always has an evenly matched opponent. And it climbs this ladder of skill level until it's able to reach the performance of the best professional players in the world. There's also Valve's anti-cheat system, VACnet and VACLive, to scan gameplay footage for the tiny, unnatural snaps of an aimbot or other irregular gameplay live in the game. The system analyzes the visual feed of a match, looking for patterns of mouse movement and targeting that are visually inconsistent with human reflexes. But like every AI, it's not perfect, and the detection of VAC Live has occasionally resulted in false bandwaves for legitimate players with a regular gameplay, a challenge that Valve works to solve. But Valve's biggest challenge with artificial intelligence came after 2022, when generative AI tools exploded with what you know today as AI, like ChatGPT, Midjourney, Gemini, and others. Valve was faced with the classic tech problem. Innovation versus regulation. As generative AIs boomed, Valve had to do something. In mid-2023, reports came out that games were being rejected for using AI assets, with Valve citing legal uncertainty over whether those assets violated intellectual property rights. Developers were told they had to show that they actually owned the rights to all the assets used to train their models. By January 2024, Valve changed their stance to be more open to generative AI by introducing a clear policy for disclosure. Developers must now tell Valve and the players exactly how they're using artificial intelligence. They have to distinguish between assets created before the game launches, like static textures and assets generated live while you play, like dynamic NPC dialogue, as both require quote-unquote guardrails against creating illegal or infringing content. The one major exception in this change from Valve is that Valve does not currently allow adult-only sexual content that is created with live generated AI. Now in 2025, about 1 in 5 new Steam games are disclosing AI use, and these are just the ones that we know about, showing how quickly developers adopted the tools once the rules were clear, and it gives a glimpse at where gaming may be heading, with even companies like XAI expanding into AI games. A report from Totally Human Media says as of mid-2025, approximately 7,800 games on Steam had disclosed using generative AI, 
representing about 7% of the entire available library on Steam. This is a near 700% increase in games disclosing AI use compared to the previous year in 2024. And this is just a perfect example of Valve's strategy. They are encouraging the quote-unquote cheat code, as Gabe Newell described it, by making transparency for AI use on Steam a requirement. Gabe Newell's look forward is completely bullish. He frames AI as an equalizer that makes outdated skills less valuable. Gaben predicts a seismic shift in programming. I think we'll be in this funny situation where people who don't know how to program, who use AI to scaffold their programming abilities, will become more effective developers of value than people who've been programming you know, for, for a decade, right? So even if you're just a pure tool user, you're gonna find that the gains to utilizing those tools are very, very high. His advice to young people is clear. At various points, there have been significant technology transitions. You know, there was pre-computer, and then there was post-computer. There was pre-internet, and there was post-internet. I think it's incredibly obvious that uh, machine learning systems, AI systems, are going to profoundly impact pretty much every single business. So if I had to point to a technology trans transition to get in front of, it's to figure out how to use AI uh, to do anything better. If you want to be an accountant, learn AI. If you're going to be an attorney, learn AI. You know, there are a lot of people who were incredibly successful simply because they were the first person in finance at their company to learn how to use Lotus 1, 2, 3, right? Everybody else was still doing accounting in traditional ways, and all this, you, could, you would look like a super genius just because you knew how to use a desktop computer and, um, and, a, and a spreadsheet, right? Similarly, around the internet, there were the the companies and individuals who saw the opportunity and uh, took advantage of those opportunities to create more value, either as an individual or as a corporation, and they zoomed ahead of, of everybody else. And while Felv developers have taken this to heart, many within the company openly discuss using AI tools for their personal activities. Gaben's embrace of AI just goes far beyond gaming. Newell, who is also a co-founder of Starfish Neuroscience, a company focused on neural interfaces, uses advanced machine learning techniques in its research. Gaben suggests that AI will make it possible for people who have never written a line of code to build software. And this isn't the end of Valve using AI for their games. Leaks suggest that Half-Life 3 will be using AI and procedural spawning for adaptive physics and NPC behavior. Their goal is real-time interactions, making every playthrough feel truly immersive. So that's Valve's complete story with AI. They started small, coding basic enemy rules in Half-Life, and now it powers the games you get recommended on Steam. When Gabe spoke about AI, it came with many publicly criticizing his position, with some joking that he had joined the evil side. But what these people fail to realize is that Valve has been utilizing artificial intelligence to generate them billions of dollars for years, making what Gaben calls a cheat code not a future gamble, but their reality.